It ain't the left side or the right side. Then it must be the fin side. Thank you, Solo D. Welcome to another episode of On the Fin Side here with Kat and Paul. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Spreaker, iTunes, YouTube, iHeartRadio, and Spotify. Check out our merch store on thefinside.threadless.com. The Dolphins play the Indianapolis Colts this upcoming Sunday in Indianapolis, 3 p.m. Central, 4 p.m. Eastern time. The Colts are favored by 11 and a half points. We are joined by Kevin Hickey from the Colts Wire. You can follow him at Kevin Hickey 11 and also check out the Colts wire too on Twitter. And I'm sure you can find them all over the internet as well as we prepare for this dolphins and Colts matchup. Kevin, thanks for joining us here tonight. What's going on. I appreciate you having me on. Absolutely. So let's really start at the top here. So obviously huge shock this off season. We're 11 days before the season starts. Uh, Andrew Luck uh, announces his retirement uh, due to pain in a lot of different areas. And Jacoby Brissett comes in, and this year, you know, he, he has a quarterback rating of almost 100. The Colts are 5-3, and three, winning a lot of close games. So what is the feeling right now around Jacoby Brissett and whether or not he's going to play this weekend? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, if I had to predict based on the – practice logs from the last two days I would probably say that he does play he's a tough guy he he wanted to get back in the game on Sunday against the Steelers when he initially suffered the the knee sprain so I'm going to go ahead and predict that he does play even though that's without the final injury designation and you know he's going to be their starter if he if he's available to play even if he's 80 percent or whatever they're going to play him they're not going to really take any chances and play Brian Hoyer who looked good uh in relief in week nine, but yeah, Brissett's the guy he's, I would, I would assume he's going to play unless he suffers a setback over these next two days. Yeah. Brian Hoyer did have a very good game. I mean, three touchdowns, one interception, 170 yards passing and Colts were within a field goal of, of taking down that game. Obviously the interception was a costly one to former Dolphin Minka Fitzpatrick, but other than that, you know, he, he certainly put the Colts in position to win there. At the running back spot, Marlon Mack is really enjoying kind of a breakout year. He's ninth in the NFL in yards this year. And he really came out of South Florida as kind of that scat back, that speed back. But he's really started to pull it all, put it all together as an overall player. Yeah, that's kind of interesting because when he when they did draft him in the fourth round in 2017, um, that's kind of how we viewed him. Um, he was more of a not necessarily a just a, a typical third down back, but you didn't really know if he could be a guy to really carry the load. And he's done just that this year. And they they really made that clear last year. They really were like, this is our guy. This is who we're going to go with. They love his explosiveness. His ability to break off a run at any time is a huge weapon for them, especially working behind an improved offensive line. So, you know, I thought it was interesting that they didn't really make any moves. They made it clear that they weren't going to make any moves, like whether – to draft a running back or to go after Le'Veon Bell. But, um, you know, he's he already has 159 carries on the year. I think he's averaging somewhere close to 20 a game. So, you know, they really do view him as a three-down back, and he's he's dominating that backfield. Yeah, and they've, they've got some good depth back there with Naeem Hines and, and Jordan Wilkins, too. At the wide receiver position, T.Y. Hilton, as of the time we're recording the show, is not expected to play. You know, I, he was out last week, too. But uh, Zach Paschal, who uh, you know, former undrafted free agent from Old Dominion, has really started to come on in recent weeks. Not a lot of familiar faces there at wide receiver for the Colts, but have been pretty productive here over the last couple of weeks. With Hilton out of the lineup, how do you see that pecking order going at wide receiver? Yeah, that's uh, so. I would agree. I don't think Hilton's going to play. Even Frank Reich said it at the beginning of the week. He said he's they're preparing as if Hilton's not going to play, and he hasn't practiced the first two days. So I doubt he's going to play. Um, Zach Pascal is is certainly the wide receiver one right now. He's even when Hilton was playing, he really emerged um, to take over that wide receiver two role uh, with Devin Funchess being hurt, and he's not eligible to come back until week eleven. So. You really you got Pascal at the top, and then to be honest, after that it's really a crapshoot. I mean, Paris Campbell, their second round pick, he just broke his hand, so he's going to be out a few weeks. And now you got Chester Rogers in there, Dion Kane, who was a sixth round pick last year, who tore his ACL. 
And, you know, they got another undrafted free agent guy in Ashton Doolin. They might call up another person off the uh, off the practice squad. But this is a very um, unproven group. Even with Zach Pascal kind of emerging over the last couple weeks or so, it's a group that has a lot of question marks. And it'll probably be Pascal, and then they'll kind of mix in a few others. I would also expect Naeem Hines to, to get some work as a pass catcher too, especially now that uh, Paris Campbell's hurt. Yeah, and at the tight end spot, obviously they've got Jack Doyle and Eric Ebron, one of the better tight end duos in the league. So we should see a lot of two two tight end sets, too, as usual. Uh, along the offensive line, I mean, I think one question Dolphins fans want to know, left tackle Anthony Costanzo. I, he's on the wrong side of 30, but to my knowledge is enjoying – one of his best seasons there at left tackle protecting Jacoby Brissett's blind side. And really it's an offensive line that's become one of the best, best units in the league here. So Anthony Costanzo free agent after the year, do you see the Colts bringing him back? So if, in, in my opinion, I would, I would see them bring him back, even if, if it's on a short two or three year deal, because they don't have anybody outside of him to protect the blind side. The, currently their backup left tackle is Will Raven Clark, who has seen very limited playing time since uh, entering the NFL in 2016. So I really, I, I would be very concerned if they let him hit the open market because a team like Miami is going, they would go hard after him. Um, so yeah. I, I would expect the deal to get done because they have, I mean, it's just, it's a major question mark behind him. Absolutely. And the rest of the offensive line, I mean, Quentin Nelson, as far as I'm concerned, you can put him in the Hall of Fame right now. Um, mm -hmm. He's just a dominating player, Pro Bowl rookie. He's definitely going to be there again this year. And Braden Smith at right tackle. They hit on that pick, too. They found Mark Lewinsky at right guard and uh, Ryan Kelly, former first round pick there at center, too. I mean, this is a line that played together every snap in the first, what, seven weeks of the season. And until until Kelly missed some time last week, mm -hmm. so what yep. would you say that one of the best offensive lines in the league? I think you have to say that now, especially after the, kind of the success that they've had, um, just kind of being so consistent throughout the you know probably over the last full year or so, because it really didn't click for them until week six of last year when Costanzo came back from a I think it was a hamstring injury. And from there on, they just kind of took off, and then they became this formidable unit that could really control the line of scrimmage. So, but I think you take a look at what they've done. You know, Anthony Costanza is a first-round pick. I know he was drafted way back in 2011, but he was a first-round pick. Quinton Nelson was a first-round pick. Ryan Kelly was a first-round pick. Braden Smith was a second-round pick. And then they get kind of get lucky, not lucky, but they made the right move to make the waiver claim on Mark Lewinsky. So, you know, they've they've invested in this offensive line. This is not just some kind of you know, guys they pulled off the street. This is some, this is something they've invested in heavily. Sure. Yeah, you bet. And I think that's where the major matchup problem is going to be with the Dolphins. I mean, they they don't get a lot of heat on the quarterback to begin with, and they're allowing over five yards of carry to opposing running backs. They've gotten better in run defense, but that's a heck of a Colts offensive line they got to go up against. On the defensive side of the ball, you know – not a lot of stars, I'd say. I mean, middle mm -hmm. linebacker Darius Leonard, defensive rookie of the year, he's definitely one of them. They got Justin Houston in the offseason, and he's got six sacks already. It looks to me like they play a pretty straightforward 4-3 type of defense here. They, they're they not dominant in any one area, but overall I'd say a pretty solid unit against the run and the pass. Yeah, you kind of hit it on the head. Um, you know, I would I would say that Darius Leonard is a star just the way he kind of emerged on the scene. But they are they're a very straightforward. You know, they run the four three. They are they love to um, use the cover two variations. You know, there a lot of times you're going to see two high safeties. Uh, they they primarily work in zone. I think it's something around seventy percent they're going to work in zone. Um, so you expect to see a lot of that. They'll they'll rotate. They'll go some cover one and some man free, but. Uh, mostly they're going to be kind of a too high defense. And, yeah, I mean, it's kind of just a group of, of players that kind of come together. They really buy into what uh, defensive coordinator Matt Eberflus preaches. It's really just kind of, you know, high effort. Uh, they're not going to try to, to trick anybody with disguises of coverages and stuff. They're going to be pretty straightforward, and it's just, you know, high intensity, high effort, high motor, just kind of going until the whistle. So, I, you know, that's really what you're getting, and it's not a whole bunch of – 
stars on this defensive side. It's just a, a, a collection of, of players working together. Certainly. And at defensive back, I know Pierre Desir missed the game last week. He actually went to my mm-hmm. – I went to Lindenwood, so he went to my college. He's always somebody oh, I, nice. I keep an eye on. And, you know, I, he, he got re-signed this past offseason after a, a great performance against De- DeAndre Hopkins in the playoffs last mm-hmm. year. They also drafted Rocky Sin in the second round, as you know. Uh, Kerry Willis, I know, has gotten on the field, a former fourth-round pick out of Michigan State. And Marvell Tell I saw out at the boundary corner position. So a lot of depth in that defensive back spot. What, what's your breakdown of that position going up against the Dolphins here? Yeah, it's, uh, it's a young group. Um, I mean, obviously, outside of Pierre Desir, I think he's 27 or 28. But it's a young group. Rocky Sin has been getting a lot of playing time. Marvell Tell's been playing a lot over the past couple of weeks. And I think they certainly caught a break, you know, unfortunately, that Preston Williams tore his ACL because um, he was having a pretty good year. Mm-hmm. But, it, it, but it certainly helps the Colts that they don't have to worry about him. It's really kind of let's hone in on Devontae Parker and maybe Albert Wilson, and that's about it. Um, so it certainly helps. But this group is kind of – it's kind of been up and down. Um, Rocky Sin has had his moments of, you know, a lot of optimism and promise. He's also had his rookie moments where he, you know, he, he's a, he's a grabby corner. So he's going to get called a lot for defensive holds and for pass interference. Uh, but the, the guy that really watches Kenny Moore, he worked out of the slot. They just signed him to a four year deal, making him the highest slot, highest paid slot cornerback in the NFL. So he's the guy that's really going to win them the matchups in the slot, but should be an interesting matchup to watch. Devontae Parker go against Rocky Sin. I think that's going to be a fun one to watch. Yeah, so when the Colts go to the three defensive back, or the three cornerback look and five defensive backs on the field, is it accurate to say they, they have a Marvell Tell on the outside and, and Kenny Moore moves into the slot at that point? Yeah, that's exactly what happens. So if they go two cornerbacks, um, it's usually it depends on who's available. If Pierre Desir is there, Pierre Desir will be on the, on the boundary as, of, as, uh, as well as Kenny Moore. But once they go to the nickel packages and they bring in three cornerbacks, Kenny Moore goes to the slot, and then they got their two big physical guys on the boundary. Um, it'll probably be Rocky Sin, but Marvell Tell has been seeing an increase in snaps over the past couple weeks. Absolutely. So taking a look at the matchups here, you know, one thing about the Colts I noticed is every game this year, and they're five and three, so they're they're obviously doing things right. But every game they've had, win or lose, has been de- decided by a touchdown or less. So. Mm-hmm. What do you think the the Colts need to do to win these matchups against the Dolphins? Obviously, they're going to have on paper a lot of matchups they can win. They're five and three. The Dolphins are one and eight. What do you think the Colts have to do to win this game? Um, really, they just have to limit their mistakes. Kind of, you know, they need to not shoot themselves in the foot. The last two weeks, that's kind of been the theme. Even against the Broncos, who they beat in Week Eight, you know, a lot of the the reason it was so close was because they had so many self-inflicted wounds. I mean, whether it be penalties or just mental errors on the field, they need to avoid that. So I think controlling the line of scrimmage is obviously going to be their game plan. You know, they can dominate up front with their offensive line and control the run game and control the game with the run. So, you know, I, as much as I think Jacoby Brissett is a fine passer, I think they would prefer to go against this Dolphins defense and really just run it down their throats because, then you control the clock, you control the tempo, you're controlling the line of scrimmage. So as long as they do that and they don't make too many errors in terms of penalties and, you know, negative runs and stuff like that, I think that's, that's probably going to be their game plan. If they do that, they'll probably come out with a win. So what is your, what's your prediction for this game? So it's actually interesting because, like you said, you referenced the, you know, they, all of their games have been one score. They haven't been able to show – even against a, a defense like Miami, who's rebuilding, they haven't been able to show that they can go out and really put a, a distance between them and the other team. So I still have it a one-score game. I think it's probably going to be something around like 26-20 because I think Brian Fitzpatrick is still under center, and I, I'm pretty sure that's what it is. They'll be able to move the ball. Um, the Colts defense is pretty good, but they are susceptible between the 20s. They're very good in the red zone. But, mm-hmm. you know, Ryan Fitzpatrick can hit on a couple of big plays, especially to Devontae Parker or even Mike Gesicki, because um, he's been getting hot in the past couple of games. But, um, yeah, I, I probably have it somewhere around 26-20. And there you have it. That will do it for our breakdown of the Dolphins-Colts matchup 
here with Kevin Hickey. You can join him on the Colts Wire. Be sure to check him out on Twitter as well, Kevin Hickey 11. And you can follow Paul and I on Facebook, Twitter, Spreaker, iTunes, YouTube, iHeartRadio, and Spotify. Check out our merch store on thefinside.threadless.com. Follow me on Twitter, Brian Cat NFL and Paul Fanatic. That's with a PH. Fanatic underscore pick. And if it's not on the right side and it's not on the left side, it is on the fin side. So OD, take us out. It ain't the left side or the right side. And it must be the fin side. Fin side. It ain't the left side or the right side. Right side. And it must be the fin side. Left. Listen, right. Dolphins fans across the land all tuning in to see what Brian Cat and Paul about.